I'm excited to chat with you about this. I've been reading the book and there, there's so much depth to the book in obviously like what the book represents and what it is doing. And then also the actual content. Oftentimes coffee table books are just that, like they're pretty pictures and that's it. And I, you know, that night was going through the book and it was like, it's got the, the visual that you want it out. But when you get in and read it, like the, the variety and the story, everything from the profile to the history, to the recipes, the imagery is incredible. And, and, and sort of how you guys are, are going about telling that story of, of this culture and, and how it needs to be redefined in a sense, it, like the, the sort of surf hundred percent in a way, you know, for me, I started surfing when I was 16 because I moved to Southern California from the East coast, New York and New England respectively. And then my parents uprooted me in the, at, towards the end of my junior year, it was like April mm-hmm. and said, we're moving to California with like two months of school left Yeah, and then get there. And obviously long story short, you know, surfing is what everyone does the ocean like is is what the community is and you're you're 16 and it's like okay can't beat him join him and this thing took me over Mm -hmm. but I spent so many years trying to fit in and trying to like almost like make these white kids feel like um I was one of them Mm -hmm. as opposed to this is mine too And they did a great job of being like, hey, you're it's cool that you're not a regular black guy, but you're more like us and you do our thing. And people would always want to pat me on the back and make it a novelty that I did this thing. Uh And then as I would occasionally run into someone else who looked like me literally once every few years, you'd paddle up to each other and tell each other the same stories. And everything that I saw was about being blonde haired, blue eyed, white kid Uh and getting the girl. And it was from a Southern, like a, like a, a SoCal perspective and or a um, South Coast Australian perspective. Mm-hmm. So I lived in ignorance for the longest time um, and did think that I felt like that I, that I came from another planet in, in, in that there just weren't many of us in the world that surfed. If I saw this when I was 16, if I knew that this was a thing, I think I would be, I would have ended up being a pro surfer. Yeah. Like I I would have stuck with being like, okay, how do I take this to the highest of the highest level? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I I just, I like, I I think about this book and the opportunity to do a couple of more versions of it and then see the way that marinates and like, you know, what what does it, what does it look like 20 years from now, 15 years from now? Sure. You know, that as, as, kids get to grow up with this. So, yeah. And that's exactly, I think the power of that, like, is they're going to love this. They're going to absolutely love it, but it is that like changing the perception. The first time that I went to South Africa in 1991 was just so radical for me. Like I got to surf, albeit in the midst of like apartheid um, flexing and, and starting to change and shift. And, you know, they, they tried to arrest me for surfing at what was a whites only beach in Durban. Wow. And um, to see what what's taken place since then, when um, upon my return visits, and how South Africans, you know, South African indigenous South African surfing has like exploded, mm-hmm. it was amazing. And then my dad started telling me stories about traditional watermen mm-hmm. in and around Africa. My dad was the one who really first put me on to like, yeah, you should look a little bit deeper. Uh, because it's going to be one of my questions with him being from South Africa, like what uh, observations he had in sort of surf culture there and yeah. history. He didn't freak out the way um, the rest of my family did. He was like, yeah, man, it makes sense that you surf because, you know, my mother used to make sure that when I went to, went to the coast to do a gig when I was a kid that I always have to bring back some seawater and some sand, you know, it was very, very spiritual for us. And my father wrote a song called Mami Wata. No way. I did not yeah, you can, you can look it up. He's got a song yeah. um, called Mami Wata, like in celebration of the ocean. Yeah. 
And um, so he said, you know, traditionally we, we go back to being water people. So this, is, this isn't strange for you. And then he was the one who would tell me stories about, um, you know, in and around West Africa and East Africa, like how much pride different, different indigenous cultures had about their relationship with water and competitions for like fishing and navigating the surf, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, and that was probably when I was like in my early twenties mm -hmm. um, that I started to learn that information. And I always got curious after I surfed in South Africa, I was like, well, the waves are this good here. What does the rest of the biggest continent in the planet have to offer? And so obviously fast forward to now through social media, and you started to, to, to see this, this explosion, you know, of actual surf culture as driven by indigenous peoples, mm -hmm. not trying to be like everyone else, but within the flavor and of, of, of their culture and community and the continent. Yeah. As I look at this book, you know, and, you, and you're really, you see the passion and, and the layers and the stories that have nothing to do with trying to pretend to be any of what we know about surf culture, but being distinctly and uniquely African. And now because of the, our ability to connect and, and, and these communities seeing a power in like, oh, this is happening all over the continent, this is us. Yeah, there's go the reset has taken place of what the definition of what surf culture means. And that representation is is everything yeah like you got to be able to see yourself doing the thing especially when you think about like the concussion the concussion effect of colonialism mm -hmm. <laughs> that you know makes people forget why only a certain group of people tend to be in these places that seem like real fun but wow the barrier to entry is so high yeah um it's just it's so exciting you know, to, to be able to be a part of just creating a platform for these stories to be sold, told. Th that was the goal with this book is like, here's an opportunity through the lens of the ocean and curiosity of, of, of surfing to make a, 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 like a, a Trojan horse of like African culture uh -huh. through the lens of surfing in a way that you don't have a choice but to have your brain bended. Uh -huh by these facts that have eluded you due to the convenience of an education that went out of its way to make sure like this, this is some shit you didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what's exciting to me. Like I, I've had so many friends that have like texted me pictures or, or posted pictures on Instagram of like their kids, their young kids. Like these, this is the first that these kids are seeing or, get, or touching surf culture. Right. White kids, black kids, etc. Like, it's like a like a white kid that gets a black doll mm -hmm. to go with their, their 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 white dolls. Like the manner in which like that uh, affects their conversation growing up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and it's just like it's it's warm my heart. I've just had we got so many notes from people who are just like, my brain is blown. I yeah. had no idea, and this is rich. And I'm you, just like you said at the outset, like that this doesn't just sit on my, uh, this coffee table or whatever to like be thumbed through for, for five minutes, but that you have to sit and spend time with and want to come back to, and you'll be able to do so with this book for the rest of your life. When I, I got the book probably a week and a half ago, I, like I, I've been looking at it for a week straight and I still haven't gotten through it all. And I don't think I will. And that's the beautiful part about it. But and it makes sense, but when you say it and when you read it, like Africa is the continent with the most accessible <laughs> amount of water in the entire world. Of course, surf is going to be a, an important part of that. But because I don't see that, like I just it, it never sort of clicked. And then the history, like yeah. you know, about the fishermen and the merchants and how important the sea is, not just for pleasure and getting out there, but for livelihood and community. And, and surfing was a, a means of life, not just... Yeah, it's that it's that that connectivity to the ocean is literally how your community survives, right? Um, yeah. And thrives. Yeah, and it really speaks to 
the 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 insidious nature of what of of colonialism and its 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 side effect of white supremacy that people can see the largest continent on earth mm-hmm. surrounded by water yep. and because of their perception of non-white people um as being less than or not having those abilities or how or why would they right just assume that none of those black people on that giant continent really fuck with water like that yeah yeah it's just and i mean people people go to africa as tourists with the sole notion of like i'm going to go on a safari mm-hmm. or i'm going to go and climb some mountains yeah but i'm and then we're going to leave yeah we're going to go from the airport to the place to do the thing yeah and maybe pick up some trinkets along the way but the idea of like bathing in and learning about its history and its culture um and its pageantry and its food and its music and all the things that make it not culturally superior but just on par and a part of what makes us incredible Absolutely. globally yeah. that people don't have that same passion to go sink into it like they do to go stand in museums in and around Europe mm-hmm. or to explore you know you know uh, southeast asia mm-hmm. or you know to climb machu picchu or see patagonia right is or see the northern lights is ludicrous cuz it's like yo this is the fuck this is how we got here yeah that's what this 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 book is and i just my my dad before he left uh this earth 3 years ago last saturday mm-hmm. the thing that he was advocating for and championing and beating the drum about within africa was for for africans to like have a strong sense of pride to the point where don't abandon who we are to go chase and get western points mm-hmm. of identity like mm-hmm. yes all that stuff is great and western culture cool but like they want what we have mm-hmm. so don't abandon that celebrate it and 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 bring help help bring that up to the level and be in pride of existence don't abandon this yeah because yeah. this is this is this is this is wealth this culture is wealth and for for people to really he wanted people to get curious about africa as a whole and as a continent and to come explore and to want to come back and come back and come back in the same way that like they pick off wanting to go back and back and back and and explore other areas of uh of what make up who we are as 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 humans